What's up guys, welcome back to Quake Combat. So this video is from Quarantine and it's gonna be answering all those questions that I uh, had on Instagram the other day. So instead of answering them by typing, I was just gonna do a video to answer them a little bit quicker and a little bit uh, easier. There was a lot of questions, so I've just gone for the first 30 and we'll go through the others another time and I also pick some other questions that I liked in there that were um, all related to, to, to mainly fighting. The, uh, the funny ones I'll, I'll put in a different video. So these ones are all like kind of a little more serious based and there's a couple of joke ones in there. Uh, question number one guys is, are you looking to fight again in 2021? And will it be Gregor next? I hope it will be Gregor next and I'm definitely gonna fight this year again, if not twice. I'm looking for September and December. I heard there's a card in Madison Square Garden in November. That is a dream of mine to fight there. So we'll see if that one happens. Next question guys, how do I keep composed when your opponent is throwing a barrage of combos? Yeah, that's a good question. But the main thing I'm looking for when they throw big combos is holes in the combo. So in the middle of the combo is usually a really good time to uh, counter or intercept them. And also sometimes at the end of the combo. So yeah, when someone's throwing a combo on me, I try to keep my eyes open and, and look for things and recognize movements or pick up a, a habit they have. And uh, yeah, I try to capitalize on, on, on that in the pocket, which is kind of risky, but I like that. Who got me into fighting? Uh, <laughs> Borkow. I was watching him on YouTube when I was younger. I heard of Muay Thai at school. My brother told me about it, and so I went and looked it up, and then he was the first thing that came up when I typed in Muay Thai into uh, YouTube back then. I just saw him blitzing through everybody in the K1 Max, and I was like, damn, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I'm gonna do that, so here we are. Who would be my most intriguing matchup at 155? I reckon Gagey. I reckon that'd be an awesome fight. Um, and also Chandler, you know, those would be two really intense fights for me and I think good style clashes. In a non-camp week, how often do I train? I still train every day. Um, my training just alters, so during camp obviously it's a lot of conditioning and conditioning with skill work. Out of camps I get a chance to like do a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of um, like hypertrophy and strength work and look after my body that way and I do a lot of aerobic work. So I do a lot of running in that time and I still do skill work but just uh, lower intensity. I try to only spar once a week um, out, of, out of camp. I cut it pretty close in my way in, what happened? Yes, so I did, I cut it very, very close. Um, so I actually made weight and then uh, I think I bumped the scale or something, I can't remember. I think, it, yeah, I'm gonna say I bumped it and it decalibrated. And so when I stood on it, it said I was 69.8 which I've actually made that weight before, so I wasn't too like surprised, I was like, oh bugger, I'll, I'll have a drink. So I drank a little bit. I went down, I checked my weight, and then I was 157. So I was like, shit. So I was actually a little bit over, because I didn't know the scales were out. So I ran back upstairs, I had to reheat the bath, reheat my body, and sweat it out. I still made the weight easy, just, it, I was just, you know, it took the time it took to sweat, I just started to get close to that um, time limit of 11 a.m. So yeah, that's the reason. Best advice for young fighters, I'd say, invest in yourself you know when you get that little bit of money instead of getting those new shoes and stuff like that maybe invest in like a little bit of knowledge if you're intended on being a professional fighter like maybe with your dietary needs or training and stuff like that like learn about different methods of training and how to progress your body like periodize the training and also get into the habit of eating really clean and just having a bit of a cheat uh, once a week and your body will thank you for it in the long run and make sure you eat heaps even when you're losing weight get a dietitian so they can tell you all the stuff because i'm not qualified to tell you about it so i have one i have the fight dietitian and i'm always eating loads losing weight and i feel great compared to at the start of my career when i used to used to eat absolutely nothing on fight week a couple of bits of chicken even during camp i'd eat nothing it was ridiculous so invest in yourself what gets me nervous the fight or the judge's decision and I'm definitely going to say the judge's decision. The fight doesn't really get me that nervous. I get pretty excited, a little bit of nerves. Um, that's a good thing. But sometimes when those fights are close, or sometimes even when they're not close. For example, uh, Rory McDonald's latest fight, he easily won three rounds. And now he's uh, having to contest that because some incompetent judging um, happened. And they gave the other guy uh, the victory. And like he said, it's worth watching this thing. It's a great thing. He said... The amount of stuff we have to worry about as fighters already, getting in there, fighting, maybe getting hurt, feeding your families, all this stuff. And then on top of that, we have to worry about incompetent judging. It's ridiculous and it's happening too often in the sport lately. Anyway, after that rant, how to reduce pre-fight nerves and the headspace, what is my headspace before I fight? 
Um, nerves are a good thing, don't be worried about these, they get you on flight and fight mode, just make sure you control them and somehow turn them into positive energy, don't let the nerves use you, yeah, don't, let, don't get that adrenaline dump, but um, I always have a very clear head when I fight, like I've told myself for weeks and weeks before that I'm going to win and all that positive stuff, I also see a sports psychologist, Dave Neath, um, and I've sort of seen one in the past, Scotty, he was the man. What recovery methods work best after hard workouts? I mean, there's such a range of things, guys. There's like ice, hot tubs, stretching, rolling, that stuff should happen anyway. Breath work, activating your parasympathetic nervous system. There's courses on this stuff, and you can learn about it, and what, like if you're doing deep tissue at the right time, or floating, and all this sort of stuff, you can learn when to do it, what works best. My advice is to monitor your HRV. If you don't know what that is, go learn about it and also monitor your sleep and everything like that and your HRV, once you learn what that is, that'll tell you when to train. What do I think about having my own sports cards? I think it's the coolest thing ever. I think it's mean because I used to buy Dragon Ball Z cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, all that sort of stuff. And now I'm on a card and that's like a dream country. I definitely need to get hold of some because I haven't got any yet. But yeah, I love that stuff. I love signing that stuff. I, I think signatures are cool as. I think they're like, you know, going more out of fashion these days because iPhones people just come up and go hey take a photo of you what's my strength and conditioning like heavy lifts uh, it varies out of camp heavy lifts in camp lower more plyometric stuff I got a guy that teaches me all this stuff and I still use it to this day he was my first strength coach when I was 18 his name is Woody Andrew Wood if it's varies you can get it on YouTube how would I describe my mentality that allows me to overcome uh, I guess so many hard fights is what I was saying. Um, I just want to win that bad. I hate losing. I understand it's part of the sport and it sometimes happens, but man, I hate it. And I just got a chip on my shoulder too. Like when I'm in there, I'm like, man, this guy thinks he's better than me. Thinks he's gonna beat me. So I'm just relentless in that fight. And I'm kind of the same way when I train. That's why it comes out in the fight, you know? Train the way you fight and uh, you'll fight the way you train. What goes through my head right before the fight and what goes through my head when I'm taking hits and trying to stay focused? Uh, right before the fight, I'm excited to get in there, I'm very hyper-focused, shutting out the crowd and just thinking about what I'm gonna do in there, just going over all these visualiz visualizations that I've always had. And when I'm taking some hits and trying to stay focused, I'm just looking for opportunities. I'm looking for a way to attack him if he has any holes. Sometimes I'm just trying to get away from there because they got too much heat. Any tips for southpaw drills or techniques? Uh, for southpaw, I get really, really good at throwing my straight left and my rear leg. And I try to make them look as similar as possible, so the same sort of movement, so it's really hard to tell which one of those is coming. That is a really useful um, weapon in Muay Thai if you're a left-hander. Would I ever do another camp besides CKB and Tiger to upgrade some of my skills? 100%. So. Our affiliate for Jiu-Jitsu at our gym is Atos in San Diego. That's the Atos HQ. So I'm definitely going to go there and do some more grappling this year. And I'll definitely go there in the future as much as I can because that was an awesome time and I upskilled dramatically there. Who wins in an arm wrestle? Me or your gene? 100% me. I'd crush his little toothpick. What made me um, decide to pursue MMA? I, didn't, I don't have like a really defining uh, moment in my memory where I was actually like, ah, oh, this is what I'm gonna pursue. I just sort of slid into it. Um, I ended up doing it a little bit at CKB with Eugene when I got back from Thailand, and it just sort of snowballed from there. there I, I don't really have a defining moment that made me decide to pursue it. Obviously, it's um, financially way better to pursue MMA these days, so that was also a big part of it. How long did I train for before I had my first fight? So I trained for two years I think I started when I was 15 um, nearly three and then I played rugby at school and when I left school I finally had a fight when I was uh, just turned 18 and then I had some more in Thailand so yeah two and a half three years I trained four before I had one fight how do you know you're ready to debut uh, depends what you want to debut and whether it's like professional amateur you know so just jump into novice fights uh, after you've been sparring for a while and just uh, that's like 100% sparring it's a great way to ease into the sport and then amateur, they're gonna take those uh, shin pads off and those elbow pads and you're gonna have big gloves. And yeah, so that, I think that's the best way to do it. Start with novice and when you're comfortable with going 100% novice all the time, just move up to amateur, have a few amateur fights, or go to professional. It's entirely on comfort and your coach should also uh, recommend you. Who is the hardest person to spy at CKB? Uh, there's a lot. I've got a lot of guys that are really, really um, 
how to spar and really good training partners. Obviously, Israel is that one of the hardest to spar for sure. Uh, one of the hardest actually was Val as well. Um, man, he was hard to spar. His hands were so crispy and he did not hold back. And also, BJ Bland was very hard to spar. That guy's got pressure, he's always in your face. He's a good wrestler, good grappler, pretty good striker as well. Um, and he's just always in your face, got a crazy diesel engine. He's definitely one of the hardest to spar. What does it feel like when you get hit hard and your legs shake? Well, it ain't nice. You get a little bit worried. That's the first thing that shot through my mind. And I managed to recompose myself and shoot for the takedown. But yeah, it's, it's an odd feeling. It's completely involuntary. Your legs just go out. And yeah, it's like quite hard to think at that time. What was the journey from blue to purple belt like? Uh, it was long. I've had my purple, uh, sorry, my blue belt uh, quite a few years. And to be honest, I didn't spend a heap of time in the gi. Um, on my uh, course two purple belt, I just spent a lot of time in the gear at Atos and received my purple belt from uh, Professor Hinga and Professor Gava. And uh, yeah, it was a, that was a hard part, it was San Diego and Atos, that's some heavy, intense, long grappling. That's a war up there. So guys, there is all the questions answered. That was uh, 30 questions and I'll do some more in another video another time. Uh, that was pretty cool. I've got some really, really good questions in there. So keep those coming and uh, make sure you guys stay tuned. I'm going to get content out more regularly. Hopefully we'll get back to the techniques as soon as I like, get out of quarantine. So subscribe guys. See you soon.